Good. Uh, you know, Kobe being able to go inside and outside provides a lot of uh, flexibility with the defense. Uh, get a little bit more speed on the field. Having Jack and uh, and Chase on the outside adds a little length to it. Uh, a little bit more playmaking. So uh, it's been it's been a good transition. Plus uh, Kobe, uh, him being smart enough to go inside, you know, kind of presented a, a new element of coverage, uh, blitz combinations, stuff like that. So it's been a, it's been a pleasant surprise so far. Is he essentially playing safety when he's inside, or is he like a nickel? Yeah, he. Well, the, our rangers are, are like nickel, so that's, that's all he's doing. Is okay. yeah, yeah, he's playing. Yeah. He's playing the uh, true ranger yeah. position. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's adapted to that. I know Danny said after the WSU game, he adapted to that pretty well. Yeah, I mean, it's, a lot of times he looked better than the rangers doing it their whole lives. You know, <laughs> so that's kind of crazy. But uh, no, he, he's put, he's in really good positions, and he matches up especially. <laughs> You know, Wazoo, we were thinking, put him inside to match up with Travell Harris, number five, and, and Bell, those, those guys inside. And he did. He matched up with them really well, mm-hmm. especially at the line of scrimmage, mm-hmm. where a little bigger guy, you know, might, might get caught. He was in there, and he matched up nicely. So, again, it, it provided a diff- different element with him in there. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's a quiet leader on your defense. Isn't oh, yeah. He? He's always been like that. You know, he's, he's just he's a true uh, i rather do than say kind of guy, you know, and, and – I mean, the reason, we, if you think about it, he was actually injured. He had hurt his hand. So the bye week, he didn't get any reps. He got no reps. And then the week of Washington State, he, you know, we practiced the three times and had the, had the walkthrough. So he got three practices at, at Ranger and didn't bust an assignment and had made some great plays on the ball, you know, matched up well with number five. So uh, it was a good thing. And that's something that we're going to continue to do, especially as, as Jack gets uh, healthy and more comfortable in the defense. You know, again, it provides a lot more speed, a lot more playmaking out there. Does that bode well for Kobe if he were to try to go to the NFL? Yeah, um, yeah. To be able to play inside like yeah. that? Yeah, because that's where, you know, that's where Coach Marv, you know, Herm, they see him at the next level as a nickel kind of guy, mm-hmm. you know, and special teams nickel kind of guy. And it's, it's really good for him to, to showcase what he can do in and outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With Jack and Chase on the outside, do you see people trying to throw at Jack? throw away from Chase and throw well, after Jack. Well, or? looking at the film, I throw a Jack too. You know, sometimes <laughs> he, he he's a riverboat gambler kind of guy, but he makes a lot of plays, you know. Mm-hmm. He, he's got that thing in him that he, he, he doesn't have any fear, and you know, and he sees plays fast. And and that can be a detriment, but also that's how you make plays. You know, that's how you get your hands on the ball. That's how you can make pick sixes and all that stuff. Um, but he's able to do those things as he gets more comfortable in the defense. You know, you didn't see that stuff early on, first couple of games, because he was just trying to line up. Mm-hmm. Now you kind of see him taking those chances and stuff because he's been he's in putting himself in those positions. You know what I mean? And I'm never going to slow a guy down. If he sees it, he goes. You know, we just got to clean up his fundamentals so that way, if it is something off or they do plus move him, he's able to get back on. You know, like a slug or something like that. He's able to still be in position to cover it. You know. When, yep. when a player gets called for targeting like Evan did on the road and all the fans are yelling at him and it's a lot of emotion yep. uh, can maybe have a jarring effect on the player. Just how do you think he kind of responded from that? To, he's, you know, he, I heard he apologized in the, in the locker room, you know, and on the plane he was, he was, he was truly sorry. You know I mean? That's, I mean, he, he understands of it today or the first two practices, he's acted like it didn't, it didn't happen, you know, and, and I get it targeting, you know, you're, you're trying to take the malicious hits like that out of the game and anyone who knows Evan and seen Evan, He's not a malicious guy, you know, and, and him apologizing like that right in the locker room, that shows you right there. That, that wasn't full intent. That was not him. So he's going about business like normal. And the thing is, we can't slow him down. He's been a good football player. He's, he's put himself in position to make a lot of plays, but because he is aggressive and because he's physical, we're not going to slow him down. We're just going to correct him fundamentally, but not slow him down. I was just going to ask you how his season has gone. How he he's, he's, he's playing well. He's giving us a chance in there. You know, he's, he's, he's physical enough. He acts like a linebacker in there in the run game, throwing his body up in there. But he gives you he gives you plenty in the secondary, being able to cover, run, flip his hips. So again, that's exactly what that Tillman position, you know, the the kind of athlete that you have to have at that position. And and he's doing well. He's 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 really showing up in a lot in a lot of uh, different areas of the game. He apologized to the team in the locker room. Is that what you're saying? No, he apologized to Herm, and then on the plane, he was still sorry. He's like, man, I let the team down. You know, I, this is hours after the game. He's still, he's still beating himself up for, over it, you know. But again, it's just, hey, you did it. Let's correct it. Doing some more tackling drills this week in practice. Emphasize the head up, taking the head up, up out of it, near foot, near shoulder. And then uh, just, you know, again, we want him to play fast, though. It was kind of a bang-bang play, though. 
those you can't control. You know, he's he's targeting one one thing, and at the last moment, the guy ducks his head, and now it's a now it's a targeting penalty. You know, and now I get it. The refs have a hard hard time seeing it. You know, real time. That's hard to that's hard to see. Mm -hmm. But was it malicious? No, nah, that's not that's not Evan. No, nah, that's not that's not what we coach, and that's not what we teach. Yep. When, when Chase gets an interception like that, have you seen in the past where that can sometimes break open the door <laughs> and lead to more? You know, across the board and yeah, you know, because he should have had one earlier that that he bobbled and dropped. You know, and and so it's kind of I didn't realize this, but you know, and this is another thing of a of a really good head coach. He's always doing comparisons and studies and stuff, and he brought it out. You know, at this same point last year, I think we had three interceptions. So at the same point last year, we had the same amount of interceptions. You know, and and then we went on a run and ended up with what what we had. Um, you know, we went back and looked at all of them and. and Legit interceptions wise with our hands on the ball, easy catches, we should be somewhere in the ten to a twelve range right now. You know, so that's that's disappointing because we, we had two hands on the ball and we didn't catch it. So that's us as D B coaches not throwing the ball at them enough, you know, when we start doing that in meetings and all that. But uh, um, no, you know, again, we're 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 there, we're making plays, you know, the most important thing is keeping them out of the end zone and uh, playing good enough on defense to help our help our team win. Coach, you obviously coached at San Diego State uh, before here, so just wondering your perspective on, you know, for ASU to be ranked and go into Southern Cal, what that can do from a recruiting perspective for those guys, for you to play, you know, to your ranking yeah. and a road game in LA like this. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of hype right now with ASU in, in SoCal, and that's all due to AP and the guys out in the recruiting trail, the, the aggressive approach. Um, you know, and that's Herm really targeting SoCal as one of our, our main uh, places in the footprint. Uh, anytime we go back, number one, for our guys, they're going to be geeked up to play, number one. But number two, those guys who, who touch the you know teammates, all those guys who pay attention, those guys are going to be watching. They're going to be at the game watching. you know. So it's going to be important for us to go out there and play well in front of friends and family. And then uh, for the area, you know, being out next week, we go out into their recruiting, it'd be really nice to come off a win and then be in the area saying, hey, you know what? You just saw us play. You just saw us win. So just keep it going. Coach Herm talked about on Monday too how UCLA is sort of finding their stride at, at this point, like they did last exactly. year. Exactly. What, yep. what do you notice they're doing? They, they're 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 rolling. You know the defense. They're starting to play well. They're starting to get sacks. They're starting to get turnovers. You know they had a great game up to Stanford. Offense wise, I think they're they're selling in at a quarterback. He's playing well. He's making reads. He's making plays uh, with his feet. The run game, which is which is really impressive, uh, you know they know what they want to do. They know how they want to attack teams, so they, you can see that. You know whether it's perimeter game stretch and stuff, whether it's inside zone, they're using uh, Dimitric really well, putting them in different places. So they they're starting to understand what they want to get done, and it's it's pretty impressive to see them every week get a little bit better, a little bit better. So it's it's going to be imperative on us to know what to do. Uh, execute the game plan and, and just be aggressive. You know, we got to be aggressive because that's us. Uh, that's our DNA on defense is be aggressive and let's do what we do. So it'll be a, it'll be a good test for us. How different is it just game plan for them? I know last year they had Wilson, their tight end, yep. and he was in the He's a beast, man. Is it just what they get more of their skill guys involved? No, here? no. The yeah. one thing the one thing about it is, and you can see it with 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 uh, Demetric is Coach Kelly has a every game he has some kind of approach that he wants to do, how he wants to attack you, and you can see it early. Uh, every game, there's a little, there's a little bit of different touch of offense that they're doing, you know. And, and with Demetric, like he's he's at tailback, he's at slot, he's at wide receiver. I mean, he's everywhere. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they know as as that coaching staff gets comfortable with those players and what they can do, they're putting them around in different areas and trying to attack defenses different kind of ways. So again, that's going to come down to fundamentals, us knowing our assignments, and then in-game adjustments is going to be huge this week because again, he's going to he's going to have a, a a flavor of the week on offense, and we're going to have to figure that out on defense and then be able to attack in mid-game. And then special teams too. Yeah. yeah. Big and then special teams. I mean, he's a great returner. Great return man. You know what I mean? So again, he's he's a really good football player, period. And like with any 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 game plan, offense, defense, special teams, you say, how's the other team winning football games? Well, number 10 is number 10 is a big reason why. So, you, you know, you're going to have to focus on him a lot. When you, when you got here, do you remember what your first impressions of Evan Really good athlete, you know. You hadn't seen a, a whole lot of him on film, um, but you knew he was aggressive, and you knew he was physical, and you knew he can run. You just didn't know what his instincts were like. And you can see he's a he's a perfect example of, of how a player develops in a system. You know, last year we uh, we tried him there, and then uh, Harvey beat him out a little bit. Then Evan kind of felt his way in there, did did well, but 
you look at him from last year to this year, he's he, he's moving faster. He he's just in different spots. You know, same defensive call, but he's in different spots. You know, he kind of feels it a little bit better, and he's confident. You know, that's the biggest thing. He's playing confident, and so you can't take that away from him now. You know, just gotta let him play. Do you look at the penalties from last week? Is it just uh, an aberration? That you know, you guys really haven't been doing that. That, that you nope. can just clean up the next week. Nope. Nope. I mean, I mean, again, it's one of those games. You know, coach preached it. The funny thing is, it's like Coach Herm has a great pulse on the team. He, the very first meeting, he put it out there. He's like, hey, do not get emotional this game. Do not get emotional this game. Those guys play hard. They play physical. They play through the Utah. whistle. Before the Utah before game. Utah, right? Before the Utah game. He's talking about, you know, those guys are going to test you. They're going to take it up to the edge. Do not get in that battle. And, and you know, sure enough, we got into the battle. So, you know, you, you lose your cool here and there, and you give them penalties, especially the ones on third down or the personal fouls where they're moving down the field. We're stopping them. You know, get them in the third and 15, and you get a personal foul. You know, a couple times in a se in a series. So that's not that's not the way we play. That's not the way we coach. You know, and it's a good learning experience, especially for a lot of those young guys. Yep. Coach, we're doing something on Frank Darby. Just wondering, in the time that you've been here, if you have any stories on him. No, I just tell you this: he's making me a better dancer. You know, if you uh, you watch watch pregame and watch him dance, man. I'm I'll pick and choose, but I'll be right there with him every once in a while. I'll break out a move or two. No, nah, man, his energy. He, he's just fun to be around. You know, he's. He's just a he's just a guy. He's why you coach. You know, you go out there and every day, no matter what you're feeling, he goes out there and he's lively. He's guy. He's bringing it as much as he can, and he kind of he kind of remember like, okay, this is why you play the game. This is why you coach. You know, so he's uh, he's fun to be around. And like I said, he he's helping everybody at least with their dance moves. Us coaches, you know, we're taking we're taking notes. We're taking notes. Go ahead. Doing something on uh, Herm and his relationship with Nate Wainwright. Yeah. Nate do what he do, man. That's that's just what that that's he does everything. He literally does everything. I mean, you know, he like personally, like he's he's been a guy who who helps in the transition. You know, from us coming and going, uh, in terms of keeping us all on the same page, in terms of uh, you know uh, uh, really helping us develop as well. And that's what Coach Herm is always talking about: helping us coaches develop as. You know, want to be defensive coordinators, want to be head coaches. He, he, he helps us develop that way as well. You know, so Nate's always around. He's always doing things to help out, and making stuff easier. Um, oh, what's up, twenty-four? We just talked about your interception, man. Oh, bro, How it's going to lead to like six, seven, eight that you promised. Back. Okay. <laughs> Drop that thing on. Yeah, I know. I know. So no, but Nate, Nate, Nate's been Nate's been pretty cool to be around, and I'm I'm lucky to be around the guy.